This is the pyranometer sensor. This sensor is used to measure solar radiation or the power of the sun. The power of sunlight is measured in terms of watts per square meter. The pyranometer sensor is widely used in meteorology, climatology, solar energy studies and agriculture to monitor and study the available solar radiation. In this tutorial, we will see what is pyranometer sensor and how it works. We will go through the sensor design, specifications and usage. Later, we will interface the sensor with Arduino and a 16 cross 2 LCD display. The LCD can display the solar irradiance value. We will test the pyranometer sensor working under various sunlight conditions such as clear sky or cloudy sky or under shadow. The variation in the sensor reading is the solar radiation strength or power of sunlight. This sensor can easily measure the solar irradiance between 0 to 2000 watt per square meter with a resolution of 1 watt per square meter. The sensor works on Modbus RTU protocol. Hence, we will use IRS485 to get the sensor reading. The video tutorial is detailed and everything is explained for better understanding. So without getting any delay, let's get started. This video is sponsored by Altium 365. The Altium 365 is an electronics product design platform that unites PCB design, AMCAD, data management and teamwork. With Altium 365, you can do the PCB designing task. You can share your project over a way for review purposes. Interact with mechanical designer for mechanical design. It also provides centralized cloud storage. It helps you with components management as it has the fastest search engine. It can also allow your team to work together on a single product. Finally, you can send your design to manufacturing unit. To get started with a free trial, check the first link in the description. Let's understand the design and working of a pyranometer. A pyranometer measures solar radiation in watt per square meter. Solar radiation is a source of energy. The energy flux is expressed in watt per square meter. It includes visible light as well as non-visible parts of the spectrum. Solar radiation can reach you directly or in other ways. Filtered by clouds, scattered by the atmosphere, reflected by the ground surface. By definition, a pyranometer has an 180 degree field of view angle. The solar energy flux varies with the cosine of the angle of incidence of the radiation. Within its view angle, the directional response of a pyranometer should resemble the cosine response. Solar radiation is transmitted by the pyranometer glass dome and is absorbed by a black coating. There it is converted to heat. The combination of glass and coating create a center with a near perfect directional response. The combination of glass and coating also has a flat spectral response in the range from 300 to 3000 nanometers. Spectral flat pyranometers are often preferred because they can be used in horizontal titled and inverted orientations. Inside pyranometers, you will find a very sensitive temperature difference sensor, a thermopile. A thermopile generates an output signal proportional to the solar irradiance from the black coating to the metal instrument body. Thermopiles do not require any power supply. Calculating the solar irradiance is easy. Just measure the output signal and divide it by the sensitivity of the sensor. Pyranometers are also available with digital outputs. In that case, calculations are performed inside the instrument. The best pyranometer sensor available for Arduino is this one from Renkir. It measures the solar energy received from the entire hemisphere. 
Utilizing the thermoelectric principle, this pyranometer accurately measures solar radiation within a spectral range of 0.3 to 3 micrometer. It operates at a power supply range between 10 volt to 30 volt DC. It can easily measure the solar irradiance between 0 to 2000 watt per square meter with a resolution of 1 watt per square meter. This accuracy provided by it is plus minus 3%. This product adopts the standard Modbus ITU485 communication protocol, which can directly read the current total solar radiation value. It's shown here the output mode is RS485 with a 4 to 20 MA sensor response. To read the solar irradiance value using this sensor, we need the following components. I have used Arduino Uno board. Since the sensor output is RS485, we need a Modbus RTU module. This is the Max485 module from Maxim, integrated that can be easily interfaced within the Modbus sensor and a microcontroller. It just costs a dollar. You can buy it from anywhere. To display the solar irradiance value, I have used a 16 cross 2 i square c LCD display. A breadboard is required as well for prototyping and assembly. Few jumper wires are needed for the connection. For supply power, you may use a 12 volt battery or a DC power adapter or any other power supply. Here is the connection diagram for this project. The pyranometer is powered by 12 volt DC and Arduino using 5 volt supply. The max 485 pins like DI, DE, RE and RO are connected to the digital pins of Arduino. The pyranometer has 4 pins. The brown is the VCC. The black is the GND. The yellow wire is RS485A pin and blue wire is RS485B pin. These pins are connected to the respective terminal of the MAX485 module. The connection for me is done in the breadboard. The Arduino board is connected to MAX485 module on a breadboard. The pyranometer sensor pins are connected to MAX485 and are powered by a 12 volt DC adapter currently. The dome of the pyranometer is closed currently. I am inside the room where I want to test the sensor working. Let's move to the coding part of this project. I got an instruction manual from the manufacturer that explains how we can send the inquiry frame and what all these bytes mean in data transmission. Similarly, it has also explained about retrieving the solar radiation data from the obtained bit. I will be using the same inquiry frame to request data and to read the data as well. Let's see the coding now. I use the software serial library for serial communication. Then we defined the RE and DE pins. The inquiry frame is defined here. The values of output are 8 bit defined here. The RO and DI pin are defined as 2 and 3. Then we initialize the serial begin function with a baud rate of 9600. The mode bus is also initialized with a default baud rate of 4800. The RE and DE pins are defined as an output pin. Under the loop function, we transmit the request to the sensor. And then we give some time for the sensor to respond. The sensor will wait until the expected number of bytes are timeout. Then we read the response data. The response data is in hex format which is printed on serial monitor. The next step is to parse the received data into readable format. For this, we have used a bitwise operation. The data converted into decimal is finally printed in the serial monitor. To upload this code, connect the Arduino board to your computer. From the tools menu, select Arduino Uno board and also the COM port. Click on the upload button to upload the code. After uploading the code, open the serial monitor. The serial monitor will show the solar radiation data at zero. This is because 
I haven't removed the dome cover. To get the reading, the dome cover needs to be removed and also the sensor should be taken outwards. While the sensor is taken outside for measurement, I got these values under the shadow. When the sensor was exposed to sunlight, the sensor reading got increased. To get the reading properly, I added a 16 cross 2 I square C LCD display to the project. Then I added some LCD code to the previous code and then re uploaded the code. As you can see here now, the solar radiation value displayed is 0. To get the reading done properly, let's remove the dome cover. As soon as the dome cover is removed, the LCD started showing some values. The response time of the sensor is 30 seconds, so it might take some time to get the stable reading. So the reading has become stable now. The reading shown here is between 9200 watts per square meter. To observe the proper reading of solar radiation, let's expose the sensor to the sunlight. As you can see now, it is a bright sunny day in Canada, but still the sky is covered with clouds. It is very difficult to get constant solar light with this cloudy sky. It is not a problem though. We will read the variable solar readings. Now, I exposed the sensor to the sunlight. As you can see now, the sensor reading raised to 400 plus immediately. This is the reading I got under the cloudy sky. The sunlight is getting brighter now. So the solar irradiance value is also rising. So it reached 840 now. The sky got dimmer now due to the clouds, so the solar radiation value is decreasing now. If you expose the sensor to the whole day sunlight, the readings will always vary. This is how we can use the sensor to read the solar radiation of the power of the sun. We tested the sensor from Canada, which is a North America region. This part of the region receives very less sunlight compared to Africa or Indian subcontinent. Therefore, reading may be high if you operate the sensor from a region. I recommend you to test it. Alright, that is all from the video part today. The detailed documentation of the project has been published on our website howtoelectronics.com. You may go through all the details, specifications, working, schematics, coding, results and demonstration. In case you have doubts, you can ask us questions in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next video.